October has been a very long month. With my account being hacked in September, with the FNAF movie releasing this month, and it also being the month where Halloween falls, and just spooky season in general, I posted over 30 videos this month, and I'm sure you guys have probably missed a couple of them. But don't worry, in this video, you'll be able to see every single video I posted in October of this year. So you'll be up to date on all of my shorts from October. Before we get into this compilation of all of my shorts, please make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's, and also go follow my Instagram. And I also snuck in a secret message in this video somewhere within it. But without further ado, here is every single short I posted in the month of October. What would FNAF 4 Nightmare Animatronics look like on Withered? Now you might be saying, Gavin, they're not Withered, they're just Nightmare Animatronics and they're supposed to look scary like that. First night is never usually that bad in any of the games, so I'll play through- Well, this Reddit user actually made them unwithered and made them look all fixed up. So before I show you the footage of that, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. Five at Freddy's is actually real. Now this is probably some of the craziest FNAF news we have ever gotten. And not a lot of people know about this as it's fairly new. So before I tell you how FNAF is actually real, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. Now very recently on the FNAF movie Instagram page, they posted this video. Someone spotted in downtown Los Angeles what looks like to be an actual Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria establishment being built. But anyways, what is FNAF's worst jump scare? Now a lot of you guys might say Phantom Mangle, Golden Freddy, the Phantom Marionette, and so on. But personally, I think these jump scares are the worst out of the entire franchise and I'll tell you why. So before I get into this video, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. Now personally, I think that the ultimate custom night jump scares are the absolute worst as they're just a transparent gif that move around on your screen for a couple seconds and that's it. They feel too cartoonish for a game that's supposed to be grounded in reality, even though it's not. Well anyways, only OG FNAF fans know about these secret Halloween updates that were released in the first three Finance at Freddy's games. Now yes, just like in FNAF 4, there was actually Halloween updates for the first three original FNAF games. And since Halloween is right around the corner, I thought we'd talk about them. So before I get into this video, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. Now you can only experience this easter egg, or if you'd like to call it update on Halloween. The only changes that are noticeable in all three games is that you'll have a jack-o'-lantern and Halloween lights in your office. But anyways, this is one of the most forgotten FNAF easter eggs in the entire franchise. And I bet you don't know about it. So before I tell you about this forgotten FNAF easter egg, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. Now what happens is when you're in the game over screen of Finance at Freddy's 1, there's a random chance that Golden Freddy's jump scare will actually load during the game over scene just like if you got jump scared by him in normal gameplay. But who is FNAF's Fred Trap? Now Fred Trap was an animatronic that was supposed to be in FNAF 3, but well, he wasn't. Here, let me explain. But before I do explain, make sure to subscribe if you love Final Fantasy Freddy's. This is the first FNAF 3 teaser image, and the image is supposed to show Springtrap. But many fans didn't think this actually looked like Springtrap and thought it was a different animatronic entirely. And that's where the rumor of Fred Trap came in. But anyways, where does Golden Freddy hide in the FNAF? games. Now, as we all know, in FNAF 1 and 2, Golden Freddy can appear at random, and I think I have an answer to where he actually hides in those games, so before I tell you, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. Now, since Golden Freddy is actually just a hallucination and isn't actually a real animatronic since he can just appear in and out of your office, I'd have to say that he actually isn't stored anywhere in the games. But anyways, this is what FNAF animatronics would look like if they were realistic. Now, before I show you these crazy artworks done by Hush Puppy Art, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. This is what Freddy's Freddy Fazbear would look like if he were realistic. And here's a look at Bonnie if he was also realistic. And here's Chica in the cupcake, which is personally my favorite design. And here's everyone's favorite, Foxy. And of course we can't leave out Golden Freddy. But anyways, FNAF isn't scary. Now yes, me, a FNAF YouTuber, isn't scared of FNAF and doesn't think it's scary. And the reason why I think that might shock you. Guess the gift and you win it. So don't try and scroll away because I'm gonna tell you why. Now the main reason I don't think FNAF is scary anymore is because of all the kids videos on YouTube and social media relating to the games. They've turned such a terrifying game franchise into something that is kid-friendly and that is associated with kids. So that's why FNAF's biggest plot hole that you don't know about. Now, as we all know, in FNAF 6 and in Security Breach, William Afton makes his return as Scrap Trap and Burn Trap. But he shouldn't even exist after the third game because of this crazy reason. So make sure to subscribe if you want to know what the biggest FNAF plot hole is or if you love Final Fantasy Freddy's. So as we all know, Remnant gets destroyed by fire. And that's the main reason why William Afton was trapped in the fire in FNAF 6 to end him once and for all. But he should have died in FNAF 3 because that's where frights burn down due to a fire. Juniors is one of the scariest and most realistic FNAF fan games. And with all the animatronics that are in the game, there's tons of scary jump scares in it. So before I show you the top 5 scariest jump scares, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's.
This is what it would feel like if you got spring blocked in a spring lock suit in Five Nights at Freddy's. So before I tell you, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now the first thing that would happen is all the spring locks would snap right into you, making deep cuts all over your body. All of that sharp steel and hard plastic will be instantly driven into your body. You'll feel your organs get punctured as the suit will grow wet with your blood. You'll try to scream for help, but you'll be unable to as your vocal cords would be severed and your lungs will fill with your own blood until you drown in it. And your last few minutes alive will be the most painful and excruciating pain you would ever have felt. But anyways, this is the best Five Nights at Freddy's song that you don't know about. So stick to the end of this video to figure out if you're an OG FNAF fan, as only OG FNAF fans will know about this song. Now when this song came out in around early 2015, it was a very popular FNAF song. But it isn't one of the Living Tombstones songs, it's actually made by Try Hard Ninja. And before I tell you what song it is, make sure to subscribe if you want to know what it is or if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. And if you don't know what song it is, make sure to go give it a listen, as the song is It's Me. So that's why these are the scariest fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics ever made. And before I get into this video and show you them, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance of Freddy's. But anyways, here are the animatronics. The FNAF lore will never be solved because of this reason. We'll never actually be able to understand and solve all of the lore because there's one main thing that will never be solved. So if you want to know what will never be solved in FNAF lore, make sure to subscribe. And that big piece of lore that we're missing out on is in FNAF 4. After we beat Night 8, we see this box appear on screen, and we don't know what is inside. And I believe there's very crucial information to the storyline that is hidden within this box that we'll never be able to see. So that's why this celebrity plays Five Nights at Freddy's and I bet you don't know who it is. Now a lot of you guys have seen this celebrity's movies, TV shows, and maybe even heard a couple of his songs. He's been in a bunch of very popular FNAF memes over the past couple of years, and well, he's a huge fan. He's also been featured on one of Markiplier's videos of him playing FNAF 4. So before I tell you who it is, make sure to subscribe if you want to know which celebrity plays Five Nights at Freddy's, or if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. And that celebrity is Jack Black. FNAF is missing an animatronic. Now yes, you heard me correct, this FNAF game is actually missing a very important animatronic that a lot of people did not notice was missing. And before I tell you all about it, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's, now in FNAF 2, all of the characters from FNAF 1 return, except one. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Golden Freddy return in the game, and they all return as withered animatronics, but the cupcake does not return as a withered animatronic, which means it is missing. But anyways, this is the worst fan-made Finance at Freddy's animatronic ever. And after you see this animatronic, you might want to bleach your eyes just because it's that bad. Now this animatronic comes from a very early FNAF fan game called Knights at Buddy. The point of the game is you're a night guard at a future science station and you're protecting the facility at night. But Buddy is there and he wakes up at night and he will stop anything he sees inside of the facility. Now, it doesn't seem like that bad of an idea until you see the actual game. And also, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. But anyways, here is the worst fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's animatronic ever, Buddy. But anyways, this is the scariest fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's animatronic ever made. Now, a lot of you guys have probably actually seen this animatronic before dozens of times, but have never realized how scary it actually is. So before I do show you the animatronic, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. And one last thing, the model of this animatronic was made by Jams 3D and Plushy. So without further ado, here is the animatronic. She is such a bad bitch though! What did he say? These are the best fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics ever made, and only OG fan FNAF fans will know about these as these are very old and came out almost eight years ago. So before I get into it, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. But anyways, here are the animatronics. These are the scariest fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics ever made. So before I get into this video and show you these terrifying fan-made animatronics, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, I've made a bunch of videos talking about this topic, showing off what I think are some of the scariest fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics ever. But in the past couple of videos, I've been seeing you guys comment about these fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics that are insanely terrifying and are very popular among fans. And those animatronics come from the very popular FNAF fan game, The Joy of Creation. So here are the ignited animatronics. The FNAF movie is coming out a day early? Yes, you heard me right. The movie is supposed to be coming out this week on October 27th, but you can actually watch it on the 26th. And no, you don't need to change time zones or anything crazy like that. You can actually see it in theaters on the 26th. So if you want to know how you can do that, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, no, this isn't clickbait. This is something that's actually true and I did for myself. So if you're a diehard or an OG FNAF fan and you really want to see this movie, you'll be able to watch it a day early with this tip. Many movie theaters do show their movies a day early. So whatever 
movie theater you're gonna go see the movie at, check their website and see if you can get tickets for the 26th. If not, go check out other movie theaters around your area and see if you can get tickets for the 26th, as there will definitely be a theater around you that will be playing the movie on the 26th a day early. And then boom, that's how you'll be able to see the FNAF movie a day early. But anyways, will the FNAF movie flop? Now I've been seeing this conversation ever on the internet for the past couple of months, people saying that the FNAF movie will flop because it's not R-rated or for other various reasons. So I'm gonna tell you why it will not flop and why it will be probably the most popular and best horror movie of this whole year. So before I tell you that answer, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's or want to know the answer to that question. I think the reason this movie is going to be the most popular of the year is because of the fan base. FNAF fans have been waiting for years for this movie to come out, and I know every OG FNAF fan has already bought their tickets. So even if the movie isn't good, it's still going to be the most popular movie of the entire year because we've been waiting almost a decade for it. But anyways, this is by far the most brutal FNAF movie seen in the entire movie. So before I start this video, yes, there is a very heavy spoiler warning for this video, so if you do not want to be spoiled, please skip the video. And for anyone else that's staying, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. But anyways, let's get into this. Now, my personal opinion, that happens when Max goes into the back room and sees Freddy standing there by himself. And the scene where she gets dragged into the suit and basically split in half has got to be the most brutal scene in the entire movie, even though the blood isn't necessarily shown on screen. It's basically a recreation of the bite of 83, and it's absolutely brutal. But anyways, the NAF movie post credit scene explained. Now, this video does contain very slight spoilers, so even if you do plan on watching this movie, it will not spoil very much. But before I do start this video, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, it's a very short and simple scene. Our boy Corey X Kenshin is outside of Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria sleeping inside of his taxi. One hears a knock at his window. He tells the person to go away, but they enter the taxi anyways. As Corey wakes up and sees who enters his taxi, it's actually a very small balloon boy figurine. But other than that, there's not too much to it. There's a hidden message at the end of the FNAF movie. Now, yes, even after the post credit scene, there was a very hidden message that I bet no one could hear that was in theaters. And no, this isn't spoilers, so you can watch it even if you haven't seen the movie. But before I do tell you what it did say, please make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. The hidden message is very similar to the mini games from FNAF 2, where in one of the mini games, in an 8 bit voice, it would say, Save them while you're playing the mini game. And at the end of the FNAF movie, it says, Come find me in the same voice. So, what do you guys think that means? But, anyways, the most popular FNAF hoax actually made it into the FNAF movie. But before I continue any further, this is just an Easter egg and doesn't spoil any of the story at all, so watch at your own caution. And another quick thing, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, in two different scenes in the movie, we can actually see Sparky the dog in the movie, and we can only see his suit. He doesn't move around or anything like that, unfortunately. But I'd have to say they did a very good job at making him look very realistic. But anyways, the FNAF movie sucks is what a lot of reviewers are saying about the movie. Now, many critics are saying that the FNAF movie is terrible, and it currently has a 25% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, while the audience score is almost 90%. So why do the critics hate this movie? Well, many are saying because the premise is very boring, and that the movie should have been rated R. The critics are saying the only reason this movie is going to perform well is because of the longtime fans of the franchise, and that they're going to support the movie regardless if it's good or not. But anyways, the FNAF movie has a secret animatronic. Now, before I start this video, this is kind of a spoiler warning, so please do not watch if you don't want to be spoiled. But yes, I think the FNAF movie might have introduced a brand new animatronic that none of us have seen before. So before I tell you about that, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now the animatronic that Chica was trying to originally put Abby in, well, who is that? At first, I thought it was actually the Stitch Wraith from the Fazbear Frights books. But the more I look at the design, it doesn't match what the book description says about him. But the design is very similar to Ella from the Fazbear Frights books. But the main difference between this animatronic and Ella is that Ella was just a doll and not a full-sized animatronic. Was the FNAF movie Spring Block failure scene actually accurate? So before I get into it, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now the only thing we see actually happen in this scene is the body spring blocks go into William Afton. But from the very detailed explanation in the Silver Eyes book, William Afton's windpipe was supposed to be severed, his lungs were supposed to also be punctured, and the helmet's eyes were supposed to puncture in the his, but his helmet wasn't even on when the spring blocks were activated. So I'd have to say, not really. But anyways, ranking all FNAF Halloween costumes. Since today's Halloween, I thought it was the perfect time to rank all of the FNAF Halloween costumes. Now the only official costumes I could find online were the four that are being sold on Spirit Halloween. So before I rank them, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, the worst one in my opinion has got to be Roxanne Wolf. It looks nothing like her, so I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. And in third place has to be Glamrock Freddy, as the face doesn't really look that well and looks very off-brand. So I'm going to give Glamrock Freddy at least a 6 out of 10. Number 2 is Freddy Fazbear. The costume is pretty solid, so it's an 8 out of 10. And the last costume on their website, number 1, is Foxy. Looks very withered and they did the legs pretty good. 10 out of 10. If you guys skip the video, no, the secret message is not right here, so haha, nice try. Uh, make sure to subscribe and, you know, follow my Instagram, but uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this month's Best of Gavin Ganawitcha.